Well, as I always say, the proof is in the pudding. This is five rounds from set number one. Now, all five of these are highly consistent. In fact, the rounds marked with these black dots all have the exact same cartridge-based O-Jive length. 2.063 inches, which this rifle tends to like. I'm going to fire at 200 yards at the bullseye in the upper left. That flew really far to the left. They're all going to the left. Okay. Back on safe. Well, you have a better look at it than I do at this point. I don't know how they did. It does look like set number two performed better. Hey, we're going to pull target, head back in, take a look at the chronograph results, and more importantly, take a look at the proof on the paper. Let's start looking at the results of these two groups. And let me remind you, this is only two groups. One set number one being anneal and then resize in the order of case preparation operations. And set number two, fired in that order, was resize and then anneal. Of course, lots of other case prep happening. But the two important parts was when was the were these cases annealed versus when were they resized so again only two groups we cannot be too definitive in our conclusions but let's take a look at what happened you know group number one set number one gave us 1.15 moa this was shot at 200 yards Set number two gave us 1.23 MOA five-shot group. When I first looked at that, that set of groups through the scope, it looked like set number two did better. Set number one actually did do better, but not by much. And in reality, very, very little. So what I would like to do, and what I have done, is I have used an alternative method of measuring these groups. You know what we just talked about was measuring MOA or expressing the groups in MOA measured by extreme spread. And an alternative method, which we have another video on that entire process, is called the mean radius or distance to centroid. And when we look at the results this way, we see that these two groups are even more similar than we originally thought. In fact, the groups kind of reverse themselves. Set number one had a mean radius or distance to centroid of 0.45 MOA. That's the mean radius. 
the mean distance of each uh, bullet hole in that target to the centroid of the group. Whereas set number two had a 0 0.44 MOA mean radius. You know, that is absolutely so similar that I bet statistically uh, there would be no difference between these two at all. Recall that our previous experiment where we looked at annealed versus not annealed cases and we shot 60 different rounds, all five shot groups, 12 different groups being fired, six of each annealed versus not annealed. And uh, the results of that experiment are captured in another series of videos. And what we found there is that the resulting groups ranged from 0 0.5 MOA, extreme spread, to 1.76 MOA with an average of 1.02 MOA uh, for standard brass and uh, or non-annealed brass and 1.25 MOA for annealed brass. When we completed all the statistical analysis with this large set of, of uh, groups being fired and rounds being fired, there was statistically no difference, no discernible difference between uh, the precision of non-annealed brass versus annealed brass. So when we have these two groups that are even more similar right off the bat, I'm almost absolutely certain that there again would be no statistical difference. In other words, the order of operations as we saw in the previous video with all of these uh, case preparation measurements being made showed no difference uh, in the case based on order of operations and when we put the, the proof in the pudding out there at the range, we're again seeing no difference between these two groups um, based on when the annealing was, uh, was done. Now let's take a couple minutes and take a look at the chronograph results, the muzzle velocity results. It's interesting that set number one, which is anneal and then resize, gave us a very nice single digit standard deviation of about eight feet per second. That's really good. Can never complain about that sort of thing. Set number two had a slightly larger, quite a bit larger standard deviation of those muzzle velocities at 19 feet per second. It's also interesting that set number one gave us a slightly slower average muzzle velocity than did set number two. Now some of that could be explained by the cold temperatures. Set number one was shot with a pretty much cold barrel. I did do a few ciders before we started all this stuff. Um, but then obviously set number two, even though I provided a five, five, and a 20, five minute, 20 second cool down, um, that barrel and chamber was probably a little bit warmer, um, almost certainly. And that, that could potentially uh, explain the slightly faster muzzle velocities out of set number two's group. Now what's really interesting to me about this entire experiment and today's part of this test uh, is related to the head stamp on this brass. I didn't mention this earlier, at least not directly, but if you watched our previous video on case preparation order of operations, you might have noticed this head stamp not Lapua brass, not ADG, not neither one of those premium uh, types of brass, not even Federal Champion, Remington, or Winchester, but instead it's Igman, 7.62 by 51 military style brass. And uh, you know this was once fired brass, uh, factory ammo was shot, I then I had so much of that I said, I'm going to use that brass for this experiment, thinking that if the order of operations makes a difference, um, it should really show up on brass like this. But it's Igman brass, not premium brass, and we got one point, you know, a little bit over one MOA group on both of these. That's not too bad. So that makes you kind of wonder, you know, uh, is... Uh, is the investment in Lapua brass and maybe Peterson brass, those sort of things, really worth it? Well, I kind of think it is. 
uh, simply because of the consistency of that brass by a whole lot of that brass, 100 cases. Um, it's, it's very consistent stuff. But uh, we really didn't see the proof in that pudding in today's test. Kind of interesting result nonetheless. Hey, if you haven't already done so, watch that case prep order of operations video. I think you'll find it interesting. Well, if you find this video interesting, you'll probably find the other video interesting. And as always, if you have some questions or comments or thoughts on what you just saw, what we just talked about in this video, post those in the comment section below. And once again, thanks for watching.